I'm calling this meeting to order at 6 11 p.m. of the Washington Heights Advisory Committee. It is Wednesday, February 8th. We are here at the beautiful Washington Heights United Methodist Church at 153 Wood Street North in Battle Creek. We will begin with our roll call. I'll ask the staff to assist me there. Lenore Gray. Here. Janasia Morris. Here. Rochelle Hatcher. Ron Sweet. Dr. Lisha Johnson. Here. Regina Phillips Freeman, Shirley McKay, Shanae Settles, here. Eric Vaughn, here. and everyone else is excused, and Sherelle Potten. All right, uh, if you could just read off the names of those who um, said their regrets. Marcel E. Arnie Montgomery. Taylor Brown, Cynthia Fleming. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. We will now move on to the Cabell uh, County Land Bank Authority report and come back. Well, excuse me, I'll start with citizens' comment. We'll start with citizens' comment and then we'll go to the Cabell um, County Land Bank Authority report and come back to the agenda items that need a um, forum and approval. After those, so I will ask: Is there any citizen comment? Any person um, shall be permitted to address a meeting of the Washington Heights Neighborhood Selection Committee Advisory Committee pursuant to the Open Meetings Act. Public comment shall be governed by the following protocol: During the citizen's comment. The chairperson shall recognize any person wishing to address the board. A person recognized by the chairperson shall state their name and community of residence. The chairperson may ask for their address, but the speaker is not required to provide it. A person may address the board only once on the same matter during each period set aside for citizens' comment on the agenda, and only on matters that are relevant to Washington Heights neighborhood selection committee slash advisory committee. Chairperson shall control the length of time each person shall be allowed to speak, which shall not exceed three minutes and shall not allow negative personal comments. Are there any public comments at this time? Any public comments? I see them shaking their head no, so we will move on to the um, Cabell County Land Bank Authority report. Oh, we will jump back. Oh, let me see. Thank you. We will move to the approval of the agenda for today, our February 8th meeting. Do I have approval of the agenda? A motion for that. Support. I motion that we send the report to the agenda. Support. It has been moved by Mr. Vaughn and seconded by Ms. Settles to approve the agenda as presented. Is there any further comment? Hearing none, um, by voice vote, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion has a theory. I have a question. I'm sorry, maybe we should have Can you use the mic? I don't have a mic. This one right. So the question was, she is an alternate, and so we actually don't have a quorum until the alternate. We haven't, um, we haven't accepted that that's not regular voting. I'm sorry, I thought, I didn't know who would come in because I was reading the So we'll just do it again, that was a good point. So I will take it. Made by Mr. Vaughn and seconded by um, Ms. 
general still stands now that our eighth person has arrived. Oh, I think you there. <laughs> All right. Any uh, questions, comments? All right, we'll just vote by those point. Voice vote again. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. All right. And so we will note uh, the time of our alternate and member uh, arriving for the business. Now we will move on to our consent agenda. If you could say your name when you um, move for support. And um, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. And I'll just do that after it gets to the way now that she's here. Um, is there a motion? The consent agenda. And then Morris moves to the consent agenda as is. It's been moved by Commissioner Morris, Mr. Sweet, the consent agenda as presented. Any further discussion? All those opposed, All those opposed, nay. The motion has carried. I'll have to make a motion at this time to activate our alternate, Sherelle Cotton, for conducting a business today. It's been moved by Commissioner Morris and supported by Ms. Settles to activate our uh, alternate to Sherelle Cotton for the transaction business today. Is there any discussion? Again, I will ask for a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion has carried. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the Cal County staff report. So a couple of informational items, that'll be kept up for humanity. It's 
We still like to partner on that rock and block event, and we do have flyers to pass it out. So we have them up at the table, and we'll make sure to give those out to you. And that event is going to be in April, and we'll bring some additional information at the March meeting, but we are looking at doing a cleanup in Section 5, and then we had another idea to do a cleanup in Section 3, so we have a couple of partnership ideas, and once we have those a little bit more work in the day, we can bring those back to you and get your input on those ideas as well. Um, and we just have that reminder right here about the March 14th Battle Green Area Association for Realtors Homeownership Workshop. Um, at the last meeting, there was a suggestion that we put an insert into the zip code for these meetings and the work that we're going to be doing on the mapping. So we did put that in, but it's going to run, I think it's this week's shop, where we couldn't get it in the deadline of the one before this meeting, so it'll be in the next one, and it includes all of our meeting dates as well as the mapping on the back, so folks will know when their area is going to be discussed at the meeting as long as we stay on the schedule. So that'll be going out, and I believe it's this Thursday, right? Yeah. And then we have our subcommittee work on here. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is last Tuesday, the governor signed into um, law of Public Act 1 of 2023, which gives significant funding to landing authorities under light elimination. This is a program that the Michigan Association of Land Banks worked on in 2023. So we did get some funding under that, and it's one of the reasons we acquired some additional properties to do some rehab. So the Michigan Association of Land Banks was working on an expansion of that program and that was the state budget office in December. And under this new appropriation, some of that language was included, and it includes acquisition for stabilization of structures, which is a big deal because that prevents demolition. It also allows acquisition or rehabilitation. And so I'm mentioning that here because we talked a little bit in January about is acquisition something we want to think about on privately owned distressed properties. It's not something we had funding for previously, but this funding can change that discussion. Um, and is that something that we were looking at as part of this project? But that money gives um, the 10 largest land banks based on inventory a significant amount of money. We haven't been concurred with being one of the 10 largest land banks, but I think we will be. And so I wanted to put that out to this group as another tool that might be available um, you know, as we go through this process. So what that what that funding does is it does allow for demolition, it does allow for stabilization, and it does allow for rehabilitation. And that's commercial, residential, industrial properties, which is really significant because previously there was a lot of money available for demolition. There was a lot of money available. Um, well, actually, that was what the money was available for. Demolition. <laughs> and it didn't apply to industrial properties. It didn't apply to commercial properties either. So this is a significant moment for us. And, and as we're working on this plan, I just wanted everyone to keep that in mind. Um, all of the rules have come out yet. Yeah, it is our dollars. This is an our qualifying area. So as we get more information, we'll definitely share it with you. But I just think it's another tool and another layer to keep in mind. Um, and I also wanted to take a moment to introduce Kita Penny who is going to be our new administrator. So we're very excited. This just happened yesterday, so she's just here to <laughs> she's here to learn tonight, and the next time she'll be here with us as staff. So we're very excited to have her on our team. All right. And I think that's it for me, unless anyone has any questions. Oh, I think this was our next question last time. How did the city uh, gain property in this neighborhood? Um, and it was actually through the old tax foreclosure process. So prior to the current tax foreclosure process, in which the county treasurer is the foreclosure of the governmental unit, there were liens on properties, and after foreclosure, they typically went to DNR. And then, I know, <laughs> it's an space. Well, you know, I went to the treasurer's conference last week, and it was set by a former attorney general, Kevin Smith, so I learned everything about this. But, they went to the DNR, and the DNR didn't want them, so the DNR had transferred them to the city. And so most of their properties they gained before the land bank was in existence. And then after the land bank was created and the tax foreclosure process changed, the land bank started to acquire those properties after the current tax foreclosure process. So it was an interesting conversation I had with them, but I did check with the city, and that's how they got the majority of their properties. So 
on your, in your packets today that we handed out tonight, we started a draft review strategy to really um, put in words some of the decisions that you made and where we're going. But we did put that total in there in the beginning. They own 200, the city has 247 properties, but that includes roads and parks, Battle Creek housing <coughs> sites and TDA sites. If you really just try to take all that stuff out and just look at any of properties, it's, it's more around 200. Um, so we just wanted to include that in there and start to kind of work on a written text about the decisions we're making and where we're going. So we prepared that, but it is a working document. It's not final. It's, it's something that we're going to you know, add to as we go through this process. And then we also printed out our glossary that is terms and definitions that we'll be using. And that is also a really document that we started with the classes way at the beginning of this project. But if we're using a term that you don't know that you want us to define, let us know and we'll make sure we get it there. But we also just wanted to have something for if the public guys start joining us that they can make sure that you know, we're following along and we're all using the same language. So those are our tools for tonight. Yes. Janaysia Morris? Yes. Rod Speed? Yes. 